My name is Abayami, and thank you for joining us today at Jesus House. We're so happy to have you here. I want to say a special welcome to those who are joining us today for the first time. So I'm here to lead us in the opening prayer, and let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here another day. We thank you, God, because you continue to sustain us, and you continue to be with us. Lord, in today's service, allow us to grab a word from you, a word relevant to our situations. Lord, let it be a word to which we can action and to which gives revelation into what you need us to do. All of us, Lord, are praying to you from different directions and from different places and from different locations and from around the world. Lord, I pray to you, Lord, that for those who may be in lockdown, emerging out of lockdown, or from a different situation to which I've not named, Lord, that that word, Lord, that you're able to bring to fruition in each of our lives, and more so, Lord, allow us just to be bold and confident. Lord, I pray to you, Lord, that you go before us. Go before us, Lord, as you went before Moses, Lord, and as Moses said, as God, I need you to go before me. Lord, allow us to be bold and courageous as you commanded Joshua. And Lord, just fill us with the Spirit, Lord, in such a way, Lord, and fill us with the Spirit as you filled your service, Elijah, and even Elisha, Lord, to which he asked for the double portion. So that way, Lord, that our faith, Lord, can increase. Let our faith activate the blessings which are in store for us, Lord, for good are the plans you have for us. And allow us to be able to be able to have that mustard seed faith to move any mountains in each of our lives, Lord. We just know that, Lord, that as the plans you have for us are good, that as we continue to trust in you, Lord, that you can that you help our unbelief in any single part of our lives. And more so, Lord, you just continue to show us exactly who you are as we continue to seek you, Lord. As we continue to seek you, Lord, you continue to reveal to us your character and your character and what you're capable of doing through us. And you continue to be our comforter and you continue to just show us all the things to which are needed. So that way, Lord, we can bring to fruition or you can bring to fruition the plans you have for us in each of our lives. Continue to go before us, Lord, and we just continue to pray that we're going to have testimonies, Lord, more and more testimonies as you continue to sustain us. We thank you, God, and we just continue to just put all our trust in you now and forevermore. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I pray everyone has a very blessed service. Hello, people. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Put a smile on your face. There's nobody like him. We're ready to trade in our sorrows. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm trading my soul. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah. I am trading my secrets.
Father, we give you praise, you're worthy. Lord, you're mighty. There's nobody like you. Father, we give you praise. Yes, you are worthy. Na, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord,
What a mighty God we serve, a mighty God we serve, heavens and earth adore, mighty God we serve. How do we give a praise we serve? Because you're the mighty God. Father, we love you, Jesus. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with we. Stone power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with we stand power and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God. Just 
Thank you, Lord, for indeed there is none like you. We declare your majesty, and we pray that our worship will be an acceptable sacrifice unto you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, tribe of Judah and the instrumentalists, for such beautiful worship. It is time to pray for the nation, and we're going to anchor our prayers on Psalm 22, verse 27. But before we go into a time of prayer, I'd like to give you some context to the scripture we're going to be praying with. In just one year, all the nations of the earth had heard about the global pandemic that revolutionized the entire world. And I thought to myself, would it not be wonderful if the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could reach the ends of the earth just as fast? Many times we enjoy the comfort and protection our nations offer that we forget that all the nations of the earth collectively make up the world that we live in today. Psalm 22 verse 27 says, All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to God, and all the families of the nations shall worship you. For many years now we have prayed for a revival in the United Kingdom, and rightly so. But now we must also pray for a revival in all the nations of the earth. If anything, this pandemic has taught us that when the enemy strikes or shakes one nation, the rest of the world feels the aftershock. Who would have thought that a virus that started in one nation, in one continent, would travel the entire globe and end up at our doorsteps? Our prayer and our hope is that the continuous and fervent prayers of the church will ignite the fire of revival that will eventually engulf the nations of the earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to gather before you. We thank you, Lord, for indeed we know your desire is for all the nations of the earth to worship you. We ask that you pour out your spirit upon the nations, Lord, and revive us again. We ask that the heart of every man, woman, and child in the United Kingdom and in all the nations of the earth will return to you. Lord, we pray this knowing that this is the confidence that we have in you. For your word says that whatever we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus, we already have it. And so, Lord, we thank you for the revival that we will see in our lifetime in this United Kingdom. And we also thank you for the revival in all the nations of the earth. Let your name alone be glorified, Lord. We give you all the praise and all of the glory. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you for this revival. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Well, why don't we uh, appreciate Jumoke for leading us to pray for revival. I um, want to again encourage you that it is not possible uh, for prayer to be in vain. Um, there's a, a quote from a, a favorite man of God of mine, E.M. Bounds. He says this, Four things let us keep in mind. God hears prayers. God heeds prayer. God answers prayer. And God delivers by prayer prayer. So just say that and encourage yourself. God hears prayers. God heeds prayers. God answers prayers. 
and God delivers by prayer. And God will deliver you uh, from anything that is holding you down, holding you back, all that is holding our nation down, our nation back, your family uh, back, holding your family down, anything that is not of God, as you pray, God will deliver you uh, from it. So let's keep praying for revival. Amen and amen. Well, um, just before I share the word, uh, we've, we've, over the last so many weeks, uh, we've done a number of things in term, with regards to uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, bringing information to you, having conversations. Uh, we've participated, um, um, especially Doc um, has participated in countless meetings um, with um, <coughs> NHS, uh, with uh, primary, the primary care network. Uh, Pastor Dan really has been involved as well. I've sat through a few of them myself uh, with the government as we Try, try to ensure that we bring the correct information to you and encourage you to take advantage of this vaccine, uh, the vaccine that is being offered to contain and stem this terrible pandemic. Now, one of the things that we've done is that we've uh, uh, volunteered Jesus House as a vaccination pop-up site. Um, and and, and this, was, uh, in, this has been done in collaboration with the NHS and the Barnett Primary Care Network. And so today, the pop-up clinic in Jesus House will start. Um, and it's a wonderful opportunity for those of you who are in Jesus House uh, who want to be vaccinated here at Jesus House. Um, it, it's going to involve our healthcare team. So there'll be people you know uh, people that you can trust, um, people who have all taken the vaccine, most of them have, o have already taken the vaccine. Um, you will be uh, uh, written uh, to, if you, as long as you're on our database, the JH Matrix, uh, you'll be written to and invited to come and take the vaccine here. Um, it will fo follow the national guideline um, so as, as the national guideline moves down the age range, um, we will be doing the same here at Jesus House. If you've already been invited for a vaccination at your GP or the NHS, you can actually choose to have your vaccination here at Jesus House. Um, you can rest assured our healthcare team will be praying um, as they are part of that process. Um, Everybody will, and this is one of the advantages, everyone will have access to vaccination here regardless of their immigration status. So whatever level you are in your applications or you haven't put in an, an application yet, uh, you can safely come here uh, to be vaccinated. Um, our healthcare team will be very involved working with, in collaboration with members of the uh, primary care uh, network um, in, of Barnet. Um, so yeah, let's look forward to it. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, for some people might say it, 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 they feel more comfortable coming to do it here. It's going to be done by a team of professionals. Our healthcare team is, is full of amazing professionals um, who serve uh, various capacities out there uh, in the healthcare industry, especially the NHS. And they're going to be working with uh, the primary care network and the NHS to run the pop-up clinic here. Um, so let's look forward to it. Um, the letters will go out. Um, they've already started going out. That's why we're starting uh, this Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. If you have any questions, um, um, feel, feel free to send an email to member services um, and then we'll address um, those questions if you have any questions. Well, let's go into the Word of God. Um, Father, we thank you for your Word. Uh, we ask, Lord, that you will breathe upon it, O God. Father, we ask, O God, that it will bring transformation to our lives, illumination, O God, to our hearts. It will break yokes, lift burdens, O God, empower us, almighty and everlasting God. In Jesus' name, amen <coughs> and amen. Amen. Well, we are doing the second part of, 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 of this series, which sits really 
uh, on our journey into God's promises, uh, a prophet for hire, a blessing or a curse. Um, and you, you, you know the backstory that, that, that has got us here. Um, uh, the, the, the nation of Israel was advancing towards the promise, towards God's, God's promises, the promised land. Um, along the way, it was dealing with nations that stood in their way. Um, the king of Moab, um, on hearing that the nation of Israel was advancing towards him, panicked and decided that he needed help uh, to deal with the nation of Israel. And so he sought the services of a prophet called Balaam uh, and asked if that prophet would place a curse uh, on the nation of Israel um, so that he could defeat them uh, naturally. He understood that uh, you could affect the natural from the supernatural. Um, and, and so uh, he negotiates with uh, the pro prophet Balaam to pronounce a, co a, a curse, uh, to speak words that will invoke supernatural power to inflict harm uh, uh, on the children of Israel so they could deal with them in battle. He wanted to cripple them uh, uh, naturally, but he knew he had to cripple them. He had to deal with them spiritually. Um, he sends elders as a first party uh, to go uh, with a gift uh, to Balaam, uh, a gift that was, was known as the diviner's fee. Um, the prophet, the, the elders go, um, arrive there. Um, uh, his response is not favorable. Um, so he sends a second party. This time he chooses his sons, the princes, and ups the gift. Uh, he knows that uh, Balaam, the prophet, has a price. Now Balaam knows that God has said these people are special. They, should, they can't be cursed. But Balaam's heart is, is, is lured by the, the money that is offered. Obviously his heart was, was already uh, corrupt. Uh, and he's hoping somehow that he could find a loophole, God could change his mind, he could find a way uh, to pronounce this curse um, and, and, and so he can claim the rewards that are offered for pronouncing the curse. Um, on his journey there, he, he goes on his donkey and we, we, we looked at the dramatic sto uh, story of how the donkey spoke to him, uh, how the donkey saw the angel of God with his sword drawn, but the man of God the, 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 in inverted commas, the prophet, his heart was so hardened and so calloused, he was so consumed by greed that he couldn't see uh, the angel of God, which really would seem it was pre-incarnate pre Christ uh, standing before him. And we learned a lot of life lessons uh, from that story. Um, primarily, we, we came to a conclusion that the root of Balaam's sin, uh, why he was disobedient to God was simply because of a love uh, for money. And so we want to continue that story today um, um, as we uh, pick it up um, from Numbers, the 22nd chapter, verse 35. Um, and so when they arrived um, in, in, at where, where Balak was, the Bible says, um, the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, told him, prior to them arriving, you can go with the men, but you can only speak what I ask you to speak. Uh, and so as he arrives at the town, Balak hears that uh, Balaam is arriving and goes out to meet him at the border uh, of the, the, the territory. And then he says to him, um, Didn't I, did I not earnestly send to you calling for you? Why did you not come? Am I not able to honor you? You know, when you have a prize and people know you have a prize, the people will abuse you, um, as, as was the case. Um, and then he then says to him, verses 38 to 40, um, I've come to you now. Um, the word God puts in my mouth is all that I can speak. Um, and when they arrived at where they were going, uh, Balak uh, offered oxen and sheep and he sent some to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. It's important for you to note that Balak offered oxen and sheep and we'll talk a bit more about that. Um, the next day, um, 
Balak now takes Balaam and brings him up to the high places of Baal, uh, that from there he might observe the extent of the people. Again, it's instructive to note that he brings him up to the high places of Baal. Baal. Baal was the Canaanite supreme god, their god of fertility. And this tells us that that, that Balaam and Balak understood spiritual things, albeit from a negative perspective. They understood, as we will find out, that there was significance in the sacrifices that they made. They understood that there was negative power that could be harnessed. And that's why he took him, Balak took him to the high place of Baal, uh, the god of the Canaanites. And then Balaam now makes four prophecies. In the first prophecy, um, the, the Bible records in Numbers 23, verses 1 to 4, Then Balaam said to Balak, Build seven altars for me here, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven, seven, seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on all the seven altars. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. The, the lure of the money, the, 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 the lust for it had seized this prophet's heart. And so despite the fact that he knew that God had said that these people cannot be cursed. He was hoping somehow that the, the sacrifices that were offered would make God change his mind. And so he went to a desolate height and God met him and God said to him, uh, and he said to God, I've prepared the seven altars and I've offered on each altar a bull and a ram. Then God put a word in his mouth and sent him back uh, to speak the word. So he returned and standing by his burnt offering was Balak and the princes of Moab. And then he took up his oracle and he began to prophesy. Now, of course, it wasn't the kind of prophecy that Balak wanted. Uh, verses 11 to 12 of Numbers 23. Uh, then Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I took, took you to curse my enemies and look, you have blessed them bountifully. So he answered and said, must I not take the heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? He asked him to, to, to curse his enemies. Um, he made the sacrifices that were required. Seven altars were built. But then when Balaam opened his mouth to curse his enemies, he could only pronounce a blessing on them and that angered Balak. Then he spoke a second prophecy. Again, he says in verses 13 to 15, come with me to another place from which you may see them. And then he takes him to this place and says to him, curse them for me from here. He brings him to this field of Zophim to the top of Pisgah. He builds again seven altars and offers a bull and a ram on each altar. All these altars and sacrifices is trying to invoke supernatural power. And then he asks him to, to curse him. But then look at what happens, verses 16 to 18. Then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and thus you shall speak. So he, come, he came to him and there he was standing again by the burnt offering, waiting with his sons. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? Then he took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. Again, he could not curse Israel, on the contrary, speaking blessings over them. A third prophecy, um, a third time that he speaks. The Bible records it in verses 27 to 30 of Numbers 23. Um, then Balak said to Balaam, please come, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peir that overlooks the wasteland. Then Balaam said to Balak, build again for me seven altars. Prepare seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull on every altar. Then he took up verse, verse chapter 24, verse 3. Then he took up his oracle and said, the utterance of Balaam, the son of Boah. And then he began to speak again. Again, he could not curse him. The fourth prophecy was even worse because by this time, Balak was angry with Balaam. 
Uh, he struck his hands together. He says, I called you to curse my enemies. You have blessed them these three times. Now flee to your place. I'm, I, I, would, I would have greatly honored you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from this uh, honor. And then he begins to speak uh, the fourth prophecy where he begins to speak about the Messiah. Now, what life lessons can we learn from these, this incident? Uh, there are some life lessons that I want us to learn from this incident. These four prophecies that were spoken by a man who was hired to come and curse the nation of Israel. What life lessons can we learn? Let's go through that very, very quickly. Number one, the spiritual controls the natural. To defeat Israel naturally, it was going to be a natural battle, soldier against soldier. Balak understood that he had to defeat them first spiritually. Curse my enemies was what he said. Invoke by words, supernatural wo supernaturally, words against my enemies so that I can defeat them here naturally. The enemy wants us not to pay attention to the spiritual. He wants us to become so intellectual, so connected to the natural and the, and the earthy and not to pay attention to the spiritual but because the enemy knows that the spiritual controls the natural. Nothing happens here that hasn't been sorted out there. All the protagonists in this, in this, in this thing called life all the protagonists are spirits. You don't see them with, their, with your eyes. God is a spirit, the Bible tells us. Uh, the, the angels are spirits. Uh, uh, Satan, our adversary, is a spirit. His demons, his own angels, are spirits. These are the people that determine what happens, and they are all spirits. They exist in a spiritual realm. You and I are primarily spirits. We might have a body and a soul, but we are primarily, primarily spirits, and that's how we have access to the spirit realm. The Holy Spirit is a spirit, and, and it is submitted to his spirit that we have access to the spirit realm. You must understand that it is determined first in the spiritual before it happens in the natural. The one who wins in the spiritual wins in the natural. The one who establishes in the spiritual establish in the establishes in the natural. The one who overcomes in the spiritual overcomes in the natural. Number two sacrifices and altars determine things in the spiritual. It's instructive that before each prophecy, before, before the words were spoken, and these were supposed to be negative words, curses, supposed to hinder and hamper and trap and contain. And you know, when we talk about curses, the natural mind instantly thinks about some old woman in some or old man in some uh, hut somewhere far away in Africa or somebody on a dark field on a dark night somewhere in England that is um, putting a hex on someone. But curses are negative words and you don't have to be in a hut or, or on a dark night for a, for a negative word to be spoken with the intention that it affects your life. You could be sitting in a sophisticated office with sophisticated people and people can be speaking negative words that are supposed to hinder, hamper, affect your life negatively. Now, sacrifices and altars determine things in the spiritual realm. Before each sacrifice was made, before each prophecy was made, sacrifices were made on altars to invoke the supernatural. Now, the comfort that you and I have is that as children of God, the ultimate sacrifice has been made for us 
on the ultimate altar. Jesus Christ, our sacrifice, the lamb that was slain for you and I, was crucified on the cross, the ultimate altar. And so as a result of that, there is no higher sacrifice that can be made. There is no higher altar that can be built because the ultimate sacrifice has been made for you and I on the ultimate altar. And we are beneficiaries of that ultimate sacrifice on that ultimate altar. As a result of that, we entered a new covenant that speaks better things than the old covenant that existed at this time. However, that does not mean that we live a life devoid of sacrifice. That would be foolhardy. We realize that, yes, the ultimate sacrifice on the ultimate altar, but that encourages us to live a life that has sacrifices in it. We make sacrifices in our prayers. We, make, we have sacrifices of fasting. We have sa a sacrifice of praise. We have a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Of course, we have a sacrifice of giving. We have a sacrifice of holiness where we commit ourselves, we shun the attraction of the world and commit ourselves to a life of holiness. All these things are sacrifices. And of course, we create altars daily. Altars are simply places, uh, the portals that allow the supernatural to connect with the natural. In our prayers, we create altars. In our praise, we create altars. With our thanksgiving, we create altars. With our giving, we create altars. We create altars altars all the time and these altars and these sacrifices determine things in the spiritual we encourage families to create a family altar uh, where constantly you're meeting as a family uh, it doesn't have to be a particular place because don't forget it is now spiritual but it is that connection that takes place where you gather as a family and you invoke the supernatural the goodness of God the blessings of God the favor of God into your family number three you cannot be cursed without god's permission we don't have an enemy that is roaming around throwing curses or instigating people to throw curses as they like no the bible makes clear from this the, the, from what happened uh, with Balaam and Balak and Israel, that you cannot be cursed without God's permission. Listen to what the Bible says, Numbers 23 verse 8. But how can I curse, this is what Balaam says, but how, what, how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I condemn whom the Lord has not condemned? He was hired to, he wanted to. He desperately lusted after the money. He wanted to be paid for doing it. But he knew that it wasn't within his power to do it. He could not do it if God said it, it could not be done. And that's his response. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I condemn those whom the Lord has not condemned. The Bible puts it in another way in Lamentations, the third chapter and the 37th verse. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission. The wise king, excuse me, the wise king puts it like this in Proverbs 26 verse 2. This is the Passion Translation. An undeserved curse will be powerless to harm you. It may flutter over you like a bird, but it will find no place to land because it is undeserved. The blood of Christ, the sacrifice of ultimate sacrifice on the ultimate altar once we come under it it makes our lives undeserving of a curse and the curse might flutter around like a bird but it can't find a place to land because we are under the covering of the blood that's why we encourage ourselves not to come out from under the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ by our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Because if we do, then we create a situation where because of our disobedience, we can make ourselves deserving of a curse. But as long as we stay in obedience to God under the covering of the blood of Christ, then we find that our lives are undeserving of any curse. Number four, 
God's word is settled on this matter and on every other, other matter. Listen to what the Bible says. This is what, what, what the, the prophet prophesies. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? I want you to take that to heart. Take it to the bank. That if God says, he will do it. Uh, what God says will surely come to pass. What has been spoken concerning you, prophesied over you from this pulpit, in this journey into the promises of God, I declare over your life that by, by standing on this scripture, because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind or repent, what he has said he will do, he will do in your life. What he has spoken over you, the Bible says he will make it. It good and I declare that he will make it good in your life in the name of Jesus number five you are blessed settle the matter you are blessed God has blessed you I declare over your life that you are blessed I declare over your family that your family is blessed I declare over the work of your hands that the work of your hands is blessed the Bible says in numbers 23 verse 20 the the, the prophet uh, for hire says, Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Uh, and that is your, po your portion. Because you are blessed, anyone who is instigated to speak a negative word over you, instigated to pronounce a curse over you, to try to hinder or hamper your progress into God's promises. As that person opens his or her mouth, they will have no choice because God has declared that you are blessed. They will have no choice but to pronounce a blessing because God has said you are blessed. If they are hired to pronounce a curse, they have been hired to pronounce a blessing over your life. I want to declare over your life what the Bible declares concerning Israel and concerning Jacob in Numbers 23 verse 23 for there is no sorcery against Jacob nor any divination against Israel it must be said of Jacob and of Israel oh what God has done I declare that over your life that there's no sorcery over your life there's no divination against you it cannot stand because you are blessed of the Lord it will be said of you Oh, what God has done. Prepare for God to do something in your life as you enter a new season where it will be said of you as people look at what God has done because you have given yourself to God. You have submitted yourself to God. You have submitted yourself to, to his spirit. It will be said of you, oh, what God has done. Number six. The enemy wants to accuse you but his accusations have failed. I love a story in the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, the third chapter, verses 1 to 5. The Bible says, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now I declare that the Lord himself is rebuking Satan on your behalf. The Lord who has chosen you, as the scripture says, the Lord who chose Jerusalem spoke to Satan and rebuked him. May God rebuke even now Satan on your behalf because God himself has chosen you. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. He was guilty. He was filthy. He did make a mistake, as we sometimes do. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. I, I declare that as you come with a heart of repentance, 
that the Lord says to you, he has removed those filthy garments and he has clothed you with the rich robes. The rich robes are robes that are drenched in the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 verses 8 and 9 tells us quite clearly that none of us is without sin, but then when we come to God and we confess our sins and repent of our sins, God is faithful and just True, true to his nature to forgive us of our sins. If there's anything that you know is a sin in your life, now is the time to confess it before God. Don't leave it for one second longer because the enemy wants to take advantage of it. If there's someone that you have offended, make peace with that person because you don't want to give the enemy a foothold in your life. And he says to them, let them put a clean turban on his head, a symbol of headship, so that they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Uh, when in the story we read, uh, we all know that the children of Israel had done uh, quite a number of things that had grieved God, annoyed God, grumbled. But then when God chose to to see them and declare about them. Listen to what God declares. And that was on an old covenant. We have the new covenant. The blood of Jesus makes us right before God. If God could declare that for the children of Israel, be encouraged that as long as you stay under the blood, as long as you come cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ, then your case is even better than theirs. Numbers 23 verse 21. The, the pro the, the, this, this prophet for hire declared what he, what he was told to declare by God. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. Number seven, whoever blesses you is blessed, and whoever curses you is cursed. And this is flows from the blessing upon Abraham, the father of our faith. Genesis 12 verse 3, I will bless those who bless you, Abraham was told. I will curse him who curse, curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Uh, look at the pronouncement over Israel in Numbers 24 verse 9. He bows down, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion who shall rouse him? Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. It is not in your place or my place to pronounce a curse on anyone. We leave God to sort that out. In fact, as New Testament believers, because we, we understand the severity of a judgment that is placed that, that God places on people who curse us. Our heart for their soul, for them to be saved, leads us to follow the injunction for a New Testament believer that we pray for them. The Bible says in Luke 6 verse 28, when someone curses you, bless that person in return. Why are we doing that? That we might be like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless that person in return. When you are mistreated and harassed by others, accept it as your mission to pray for them. Number eight, it pleases the Lord to bless you so anyone who tries to curse you will have no choice but to bless you. You simply cannot be cursed because it pleases the Lord to bless you. If anyone is hired to curse you, that person will have no choice but to bless you. Look at the, this, the, 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 the fourth oracle as we come towards an end. Then he took up his oracle Numbers 24, verses 3 to 4. I want to read this because I want to read it over your life. Numbers 24, verses 3 to 4. As we come to an end, Numbers 24, verses 3 to 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. The third, prophet, the third prophecy. Now Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. He did not go as at other times, to seek to use sorcery because it had failed. But he set his face toward the wilderness and Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel encamped according to the, their tribes and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. 
Then he took up his oracle and said, The utterance of Balaam, the son of Beer, the utterance of the man whose eyes are open, the utterance of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. And I declare over your life this utterance, How lovely are your tents, O Jacob! Put your name in there. Your dwellings, O Israel, like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. He shall pour water from his buckets and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agag and his kingdom shall be exalt, exalted. God brings him, brings you out of Egypt. You have strength like a wild ox. You shall consume the nations, your enemies. He shall break, you shall break their bones and pierce them with arrows. He bows, that's you, bows down. You lie down as a lion and as a lion who shall rouse you. Blessed is he who blesses you and cursed is he who curses you. I declare that over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Your home is blessed. Your work is blessed. You have the strength of an ox. Uh, no one can curse you. Anyone who tries to curse you will have no choice but to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. And as I come to an end, the fourth prophecy is really a prophecy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I take just one verse of that fourth prophecy, Numbers 24 verse 17. I see him, but not now. I be behold him, but not near. Your privilege and my privilege is that we saw him now when he died on the cross. We see him near to us. A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. Of tumult. Now, what is the Bible saying? That a savior will arise who will fight our enemies on our behalf. A savior will arise that will guarantee our victory. A savior will arise that will take on our sin so that we are spared the wrath of God. Now all we have to do is receive that savior as our Lord and savior to enjoy all those benefits. To enjoy all the benefits that I have spoken about. All the things that I have declared concerning your life. All we have to do is to receive that Savior as our Lord and Savior. And as I end now, if there's anyone out there who hasn't done that, how can we hope to win in the spiritual? How can we guarantee that even if someone chooses to curse us, the person has no choice but to bless us because the Lord has not commanded it. It cannot happen. How can we ensure that these blessings over our homes and our families bear fruit in our lives? How can we guarantee that in this journey of life, whatever obstacle we face becomes a stepping stone to a higher level of glory? How can we benefit from the sacrifice that was made, the ultimate sacrifice, the lamb that was slain for us on the ultimate altar by receiving him into our lives as our Lord and Savior. If you would love to do so, I would really encourage you to. I'd be privileged to pray for you. If you would just say this prayer after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son Jesus Christ. I receive him into my life today as my Lord and my Savior. I turn away from anything sinful as I de dedicate myself to a life of obedience to you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the grace to do so. Thank you for receiving me into your family. I am now a child of yours under the covering of the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. I am blessed, Heavenly Father, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to God's family. 
uh, that simple prayer that you said, meaning every word, confessing it, and believing every word has ushered you into God's family. One of the first things I would like to ask you to do is, a, is an act of declaration, an act of faith that confirms what you have done. Uh, if you're on the JHTV platform, um, you'll see a box that urges you to, as you press it, to raise your hand in a virtual sense. Why don't you press that box? If you're on any of the other platforms, press the link that has appeared on the screen. Uh, please fill the form that, that follows the link uh, and then give us a chance to stand with you. The heavens are celebrating you. We celebrate you here on earth and welcome you into God's family. God bless you. I want to declare that God has blessed you. It is impossible for you to, to be cursed. I declare that every curse as far as you're concerned, is causeless. You are undeserving of it. It cannot find a place in your life. And I declare that you are blessed. I bless you in the name of our Heavenly Father. I bless you in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of His Spirit. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. What amazing revelations week after week. What an awesome God we truly serve. Hello, church. We've come to that part of the service where we worship God with our tithes and our offerings. You know, our worship of God is any act that we perform that shows our love and our devotion to him. And our giving is a form of worship. Here at Jesus House, that is what we truly believe. And so even if you're worshiping with us for the first time today, whilst we do not compel you to join us in this act, we would like to encourage you to actually join us because it is a sacred moment, a moment of worship to our God that gave us everything. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 29, Ascribe to the Lord the glory that is due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Is there someone listening to me today that is just so grateful to the giver of every good and perfect gift? I'd like to encourage us to bring a gift before our maker today. I'll give us some time and then we'll pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. I thank you for every single person that is connected here with us today. I thank you for everyone that is worshiping you right now with their seed, their love seed, oh God. What can we give to a God that gave us everything? A God that gave us his very son, his only son. Father, we have nothing else to give you but ourselves in worship. And today, we bring out of what you have given to us. And we ask, oh God, that you accept our sacrifice. We ask that it will come up to you as a sweet scent. Lord, I pray especially for anyone that does not have to give because their finances have been impacted. I thank you because you are the one that gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. And I thank you that by the next time we would gather together, they would have something to sow because the heavens would open, oh God. I pray for anyone going through a tough time, anyone out of work, anyone that has been impacted by the pandemic, Father, I thank you because your breath brings everything to life. And I ask, oh God, for your breath upon everyone's finances, oh God, and upon the finances of your church. Father, we ask that the seed that is given today would come up to you as a sweet scent and it will go forth for the furtherance of your work here on earth. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you for joining us in this act. Every time we worship God, it ascends as a sweet scent to heaven, but we also reap the rewards here on earth because lives are touched. Lives that you may never ever get to meet on this side of eternity, but they are records in heaven. So God bless you as you give. Just as I end now, a video would come up if you're not already used to the various mediums through which we give that would tell you about the various mediums or remind us for those of us that already know. But God bless you and may the Lord's hand continually be upon your finances in Jesus' name. Amen.
I shall rise, I shall be, I shall go in victory, no weapon formed against me will never overtake me. Come on, because God, and because God is the greatest power. We shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. See, I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. And I shall go. I shall go. In victory. Exalted and never be defeated. I never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. And never be defeated. Never be defeated. And never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted.
Hello everybody, my name is Joy and I'll be bringing you this week's 7 News. off ladies a set of dates for your diaries thursday the 25th of march to saturday the 27th of march we are having our uncommon woman conference 2021 has shown us that virtual makes many things possible so this whole conference is going to be virtual and we will have five amazing ministers and an amazing guest and worship minister coming to join us We'll be having Hayley Melinda, we'll be having Michelle McKinney Hammond, we'll also be having uh, Elder Charlotte Reed, we will also be having Mrs. Ola Jumoke Adenowo and Rachel Gardner. Now our guest worship minister is Lucy Grimble, an amazing minstrel of the Lord who will be joined by our fabulous TOJ choir now in order for you to sign up it's super simple you just visit www.uncommonwomanconference.co.uk where you'll find all the details do not miss this ladies let's start spreading the word now we have told you all about what the Aruna fund that was set up at the start of the pandemic to help people who would be in need as a result and we've been telling you what it's been up to and it's been amazing from our food bank and supporting people in the local community, our Aruna helpline where people can call up and be encouraged, a lot of counselling support, business support, etc. Well, we still have work to do and we really need volunteers. So if you can join the helpline team as a buddy on the phones or as somebody who can offer counselling, we want to hear from you. If you have some spare time to help with some of the deliveries, please, if you could join us at the food bank helping, Thank you very much in order for you to just share your skills and your time and support this great work just visit www.jh7.uk forward slash respond we really really need help right now and also if you do need someone to speak to if you haven't yet called us up please do give us a ring there are people on the other end of a phone just ready to listen to challenges that you may be going through and and just to offer that encouragement so the number for our aruna helpline is 0203 887 3982 or you can send us an email at aruna at jesushouse.org.uk now at jesus house we have so many opportunities for prayer and for bible study on a monday tomorrow we will be having our seven till eight regular bible studies installment Deepen that knowledge of the word by simply visiting www.jh7.uk forward slash Bible studies to get all of the details in your email box and um, so you can join those meetings. We also have a daily Monday to Friday prayer webinar from 6 till 7 a.m. on Zoom. In order for you to get the details, you visit www.jh7.uk forward slash time to pray 21. And we also have prayer calls that happen on a Tuesday from 7 till 8 and on a Friday from 9 till 10 and to get those details they're on the screen right now but you can also visit www.jh7.uk forward slash prayer line and all the details will be available for you. Now at Jesus House our amazing youth team organize services for our young people aged 13 to 18 every Sunday from 10.30 till 11.30 a.m. In order for you to join, simply visit www.jh7.uk forward slash ruck zoom in order for you to join that. Then for our young people who are a little bit older or at university, 19 and above, um, on Instagram, you can join the 3 p.m. Instagram live ruck service by visiting rucjh their channel and clicking the Instagram live at 3 p.m. Now, parents, for all of our children under the age of 12, we have classes dedicated to them. Uh, they are straight after service and you simply visit www.jh7.uk forward slash KF. SRV. Now we've told you about the Prayer Shield, our initiative with so many different church leaders and denominations across the UK where we are declaring God's word over this nation and praying that God will heal our land. If you haven't been a part 
of following the prayer shield and all of the declarations, simply visit www.theprayershield.uk to get those details directly. Or you can follow the prayer shield on Instagram. The handle is at the prayer shield UK and on all other social media platforms at prayer shield UK. Now you can follow Jesus House again on social media. Our handles are at Jesus House London and at Jesus House UK. And that brings me to the end of this week's seven news. So until next week, stay blessed, take care and hopefully see you soon. Bye. Wow. I am, I am, I am. Why would I say that? God is the I am that I am. And that's how he introduced himself to the children of Israel when they were in bondage. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. There's an undercurrent of the I am. We are fruit bearing branches, imitators of Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Did he not? Hmm. So today we are grateful. Grateful for what? Good question. Well, God's plans allowed us to come together today to worship him, to praise him, to pray to him, hallelujah, to intercede on that which concerns us, hearty matters to break our daily bread together, the hearing of his word from our pastor Agu, given to us according to who? God's heart, Jeremiah 3.15, have a look at it in the week. So we are thankful that God took the time to get us a pastor that would feed us with knowledge and understanding. So we're thankful to God for the fruit of God's word in his unfailing plans for us. Talking about unfailing plans, Joel 2 verse 28 becomes ever so relevant at this time of the service. Now, why do I say that? Let me take the time to explain it. It says in Joel 2 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Hmm. We are living in the afterward. We are all sons and daughters. So we are in the company of prophets. Agreed? Great. What we say in faith, believing and receiving in line with God's will, will come to pass. The young amongst us will see visions. They will run after those visions. <laughs> the old and those betwixt between the two, grey hair gives that out. We'll dream dreams. Fantastic. So what did we prophesy? What was our vision? What did we dream? We asked God to send us new guests. So we are thankful that we have new guests that we are acknowledging right now. You are, you were, and you always will be the fulfillment of prophecy. New guests are the dream that has come true. New guests, you are the vision of faith accuracy. Bam, arrow of deliverance. Thank you for being our new guest today. We welcome you on behalf of the kingdom of God. We celebrate you. We value you. We hold you in high esteem. We notice, we acknowledge, and are humble to witness another better than next flick episode. God got it right episode, I should say. Better than binging on it all night. Better than any form of entertainment, anything the world can offer is the fact that God has brought you today as new guests. So we want to direct this next part of the service to you. Now, new guests, I know you might be connecting to this service from a variety of devices. If you're on a laptop or a tablet, you will have a graphic slide which you can click on. It will appear just beneath the player in front of you right now. We want you to fill in the form that is attached to it and submit it to us. Remember, you're our prophecy, our vision, you are our dream come true. If you're on a mobile device, you won't get to see the slides, but the host will have dropped a link into the chat area, which you can click on. And if you've maximized your screen, you're watching us on a smart TV, you're probably not seeing either of the slides or the chat, but you can visit www.jh7.uk forward slash welcome to fill in the form. And that's how we can stay in touch with you because you matter new guests you are special to us so on that note we welcome you and we want to finish in prayer today how do we want to close the service in prayer well of course Joel 2 verse 28 God has plans remember the plans that he would pour out his spirit upon us in the last days which is now so the afterward means that this week we are praying that we will walk in the vision of the Lord we will walk in the dreams that God has given us and we will move in prophecy 
opening our mouths to exercise that which we confess, believe and receive. And no doubt we will be able to have testimony to give God glory. May this week be a glorifying week. May this week be a week of vision. This week be a week of testimony. This week be a week, a week of prophecy, dare I say. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak in faith right now through confession and believing and receiving. And no doubt, Lord, excited about the testimonies that will bring about glory to your name. We exclaim, we declare, prophesy, whisper, shout, intentionally think and meditate on, on the goodness of God this week in the name of Jesus. It will be an explosive week. This week will be a week of testimony. This week will be a week of breakthrough. This week will be a week that we will acknowledge that God is great. His mercy endure forever. I think it says in Psalms 138 that the Lord will fulfill those plans that he's already worked out for us. You know, God does not forget, you know, and I think it ends by saying, forsake not the work of your hands. Oh God, do not forsake us this week, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we expect, we receive, we believe, we prophesy that the blood of Jesus is a voice that speaks for us and we will do exploits as those who know their God. So in the name of Jesus, we are declaring from Jesus' house, from Pastor Agu, from the the pastoral team for every worker, every volunteer, and every new guest that this week will be an explosive week that will remind us that God rules the affairs of men and sits on his throne in heaven and it will be well with us because he has poured out his spirit upon our flesh. So go in the name of Jesus and prophesy. Go in the name of Jesus and dream. Go in the name of Jesus and have visions. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week at Jesus House.